Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Rightway Options, and this is a morning market prep video for Monday, February 28th, 2022. So my goodness, we had a amazing short squeeze rally the last two days of the week, but unfortunately it really didn't do a whole lot as far as changing the overall downtrend or um, resolving some of the technical issues in the chart. So what does that mean for today? Well, how about we settle in, let's buckle up, let's get ready for the Monday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone. I hope you all had a wonderful weekend. You know, I've been accused by uh, um, someone who continues to post on the channel um, that is uh, completely upset with me because I say good morning and, and all of those kind of things to my fellow traders out there just simply because um, the world is kind of in chaos and um, there's no reason for me to be upbeat or positive. But um, unfortunately, uh, that person is, is always going to be disappointed in me because I'm always going to be upbeat and positive um, because uh, looking at, the, at all of this stuff any other way, um, there's no control that I have over it. And what I want to do is take a close look at the charts without all of the emotional aspect involved and see if we can get some information about how we may want to approach the market for today. So let's take a look at these charts and see if we can gain some information. If we notice here, we had this beautiful little um, relief rally the last couple of days that triggered a lot of this was short squeeze. And you can kind of see that in the volume of the chart. Volume was relatively low. Um, particularly on Friday um, as we continued to surge to the upside and we did push up here and we started to test some resistance levels in the chart and even popped through just uh, maybe a tiny little bit here on the Dow. Unfortunately guys, um, even though that is nice to see and it was nice to get a little bit of relief in the selling pressure, let's keep in mind it has not changed the overall downtrend um, in the charts and that we still have to deal with all of these resistance levels above in the chart. So hopefully you were careful and cautious on that, didn't overtrade because of the uncertainties that still remain out there with the Russian Ukrainian thing going on. I guess the next 24 hours could be very critical. They're going to meet and maybe try and talk and find some common ground. That certainly could change things and improve things. But I got to tell you guys, we still have ugly technical patterns here in the chart to deal with. So we've still got all of this price resistance above and that downtrend that is still challenging us. And unfortunately, this morning, we're looking at a pretty substantial gap down this morning, although it has bounced off of the lows of the overnight. Um, I, I would not rule out a possibility that we would retest those lows of the overnight, however. So let's take a look here. If we can rally back and defeat some of these resistance levels in the chart, Keep in mind, we still have that downtrend in play here where we could continue to show some failure in the chart. And if we find um, those bears re-engaging and pushing down, let's keep an eye on this area right in here. A failure back under there could be um, a problem for the market, and particularly psychologically. It could be pretty damaging. So watch that closely. And then um, taking a look at our technicals, they're obviously pretty technical. I mean, pretty bearish in these technicals. Our 34 EMA down through the 200, we will quickly see that diamonds be pushing down that 50 through the 200, unless something amazing changes here. Um, we're going to have the death cross coming here on the diamonds, maybe even before the end of the week. So watch that closely. And then if we take a look at our SPY, now SPY also had a substantial substantial rally back and was probably the strongest of the bunch. Notice that we actually broke through 
this resistance level in the chart. So we broke up above that. And even this morning on the gap down, we're just pushing down in here to test that low. So that is um, a nice little improvement here overall. But unfortunately, our downtrend still remains intact. And we just have really big resistance levels above in this chart to still be defeated. So I'm not really going to be sounding the all clear and saying, you know, everything is rosy here in the market because I don't see that. If we continue to rally, we'll have to break through these levels up here and break through that downtrend in the chart. And we can't be sure, we really can't be sure that the downtrend has been defeated. Even if we pop through guys, if we pop through, we need to prove after we pop through that we can hold it as support then we can start looking for those nice bullish moves back to the upside. But until that occurs, we still got a lot of damage here to correct. Now, once again, if those bears really take over today, let's watch these levels right down in here. If we were to crack back down through these or break that support once again here in the chart, that could be problematic here for the SPY. And like I said, particularly psychologically. And then if we take a look at those technicals, the SPY has the biggest distance between the 200 and the 50 day moving average. So we still have, keep our fingers crossed, some hope that that could yet recover. Um, but let's keep in mind that we're still underneath our 200 day moving average and our 34 EMA is crossing down through the 200 day. So we have a really substantial resistance level in the chart up through here that could well, it's going to require something special to move us up through there. And then if we take a look at our QQQ, I got to tell you, QQQ is really, um, really sick. Um, if you notice here, our downtrend, we came close to challenging our downtrend in this rally back. And we did have the good news that we broke through that resistance here on Friday. But let's keep in mind, the bigger resistance levels are still above in the chart and they are substantial. And um, obviously our downtrend is still in play here. So we'll wanna watch that as we push up here to maybe challenge that. And let's keep in mind guys, even though it's a little bit hopeful that that downtrend is so near on this chart in the QQQ, this is not so helpful. Um, the fact that our 50-day moving average um, is going to cross down through the 200-day, creating that death cross, and it will be joining the Russell um, with its 50 below the 200 here um, this week. So watch that carefully. Definitely not what we want to see technically in a chart. And then if we take a look at our Russell, our Russell responded back remarkably well the last couple of days and we're pressing up in here toward that downtrend in the chart. Now this has been um, relatively oversold here in this chart. And you can see we're pressing up toward that level, but let's keep in mind, we still have um, quite a bit of resistance levels above and then almost a year's worth of resistance up here in that chart. So this nice little oversold bounce was wonderful, but we still have a lot of challenges here to recover uh, the Russell. If we take a look here technically, pretty darn um, ugly. Now we did hold the 500 day moving average with this double bottom. That gives us that little hope that we could continue to rally. But let's keep in mind, we're going to have to break up through here to complete that W pattern and then prove to hold. And that would require us to break the downtrend as well. So um, watch that carefully and just notice that that 50 day moving average is dropping down to maybe put a lid on that potential bullishness in IWM. So just keep a close eye on it. Then let's take a look at our VIX. Now, unfortunately, our VIX, well, didn't resolve anything. Even in the two day rally, it really didn't resolve anything. Notice that we we did relieve the pressure, which was nice, but notice that we are still maining upside trends here in our VIX. And fear remains high. So we're up here, not quite a 30 handle, but we're holding well above this price support level in here around the 25 handle in that chart. And this morning with the sell off, we are likely to see this fear bounce back up a bit. So 
Keep a close eye on that. Fear is still with us. High volatility is still with us. If you're an option trader, those options are getting very, very expensive with the high volatility, the wide bid as spread. So I'm going to caution you to be very, very careful. Let's take a look at our T2122. Now the T2122 indicator, I get lots of questions on this, but really all it is, is a four week new high, new low ratio. If you can see it right there, four week new high, new low ratio. And what you can see is that we went from an oversold position to a two-day rally that pushed us nearly into an overbought condition. Now, I hate it when we whip around like this. Notice how we're just, it's all emotion right now. It's just all emotion. We're just whipping around like crazy um, in this market. And this morning, as you know, we're going to get a gap down here and that could re, uh, push us back down um, in this chart. Now, if we can find some reason for bullishness today, we certainly have a little bit of upside opportunity yet before we reach a full overbought condition in the chart. But as we know, the bears have kind of grabbed on with the uncertainties out there and the new sanctions against Russia and we're pushing back. So we also cannot rule out that possibility that those bears will find that inspiration and we come all the way back down into this oversold condition let's take a look at our t2108 now t2108 had a nice improvement and there is some good news in this chart the good news is notice we have a have this area of support in here and even with that heavy selling that came in um, toward uh, the middle of the week, we held this higher low in the chart. So we have this little tiny higher low in here, which gives us just that little bit of hope. Now, will it get dashed against the rocks here today? I don't know. But we do have to keep in mind that we still have a substantial downtrend in T2108. And 34% of our stocks are holding above their 40-day moving average. Not exactly a, um, a bullish picture in that market yet, but there is that improvement. And then if we take a look at T2107, we also had that hope in here because we held this higher low in T2107, but unfortunately we still have massive levels of price resistance above for this to defeat and this huge, huge downtrend that still has a lot of work to recover from. 32% um, of our stocks holding above the 200 day, again, not exactly a bullish sign for the market, but an improvement over what we've seen, um, you know, what we saw earlier last week. Let's take a look at our T2101. As I was suggesting, this T2101 was kind of giving us the clues of a big move. I didn't know if it was going to be up or down. And you can see um, we did elevate on that rally uh, the last couple of days. But notice yesterday, I mean, last Friday, it started to pull back once again with those volumes declining, which really shows that uncertainty um, for that upside move and really the pressure of the upside resistance in the chart. So keep a close eye on that T2101, kind of an interesting chart at the moment. Let's take a look at our economic calendar for today. In our economic calendar, we got a couple things. This week is going to be a real interesting week on the calendar. If you notice right here today, before the bell, we're going to have international trading goods. Now, this is the advanced number um, out there, and we've been largely ignoring our international trade numbers, which came in last time at a brand new record deficit. So we'll want to watch that closely to see if that improves a little bit this week. Um, but I'm not going to hold my breath on that. Um, we've kind of been ignoring that for a long time because the U.S. just imports everything pretty much anymore. We don't make a whole lot. Um, so watch that closely. And then we've got the Chicago PMI here later in the day. We got some retail, you know, advanced numbers in here that, you know, potentially could move us around. But that's about the size of it for today. But then for the rest of the week, oh my goodness, on Tuesday, guys, you know how tenuous these have been. The PMI and ISM manufacturing um, numbers um, have been a little bit of a concerning um, area. So we'll want to watch those closely. Um, those 
well, those could be kind of interesting tomorrow. And then we've got ADP coming in here on Wednesday with Jerome Powell speaking in Congress for the next couple of days. So we know how that can be um, a little bit well, create some volatility in the market. And right before that, we have a couple other Fed speakers. We all know uh, James Bullard is probably the most hawkish, pushing for a one-point increase um, in um, interest rates. And as we progress through the week, then, of course, take a look over here. We have got jobless claims, productivity, and costs. And then we're going to finish up the week over here with the employment situation. So busy week on the economic calendar. Now on the earnings front today, we also have a busy day with um, around 200 companies reporting. And if you guys want to catch the full list of notables, make sure you click the link just below the title of the video. That'll take you back to the morning blog where you can get that full list of potential notables. Now, keep in mind, guys, although we have these notables, they're not exactly what you would call market moving um, reports. Um, we're starting to kind of run out of those market moving reports um, as we wind down earnings, but just kind of keep that in mind. Now let's take a look. We've got um, uh, DDD will be reporting today. We've got um, AMBA, if you like um, um, some of these semiconductors, it's it's really been kind of interesting how we're, we're, we're so short, short on chips, but we just can't seem to get any of these semis um, moving here in the market to the upside. So keep an eye on that as it reports. Uh, BLNK will be reporting today. We'll hear from Ride today. Um, we'll hear from HPQ. Um, this afternoon. So keep an eye on that. OKE got a little oil and gas in there and that's been one of the strongest sectors here in the market in oil and gas. So keep an eye on that. And then W Day will be reporting today as well. So keep an eye on that. And once again, if you want to catch the full list, click that link just below the title of the video. That'll take you back to the morning blog and you can get that full list of stocks. So how about we take a look at maybe some things that could be setting up but before we do that, guys, if you could do me a quick favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post a video. And if you find these videos to be useful and helpful in preparing you for the day, if you could please click that thumbs up button and leave that brief comment. And I just have to say thank you so much to everyone who does do that and, and for the folks that are sharing these videos out on your um, social media feed that helps the channel to continue to grow and you guys are truly awesome thank you so much um, never in my wildest dreams would I have thought just some common sense no prediction content um, reach um, this kind of support so I truly truly appreciate it you guys now if you um, I have supported the channel through the buy me a coffee link. Um, I think later this week, um, you are going to, well, I'm gonna do some testing on some live um, training out there in the market. So you may wanna keep an eye out for that here coming up. I'll get an announcement out as soon as, uh, as, soon as I'm prepared. And then um, let's take a look at some of these stocks that could be setting up. And please keep in mind, guys, that these are not, um, necessarily stocks that you want to just run out and buy um, you should never ever blindly follow anyone else's trade ideas these are just something you might want to put on a list and maybe consider let's take a look at a couple things in here um, Penn National. Now, Penn National had some volatility here recently, um, bounced down pretty hard and then bounced right back up. And notice we're up here testing that resistance level in the chart. And although we have lost this um, little upside trend in this chart, I would still keep an eye on this, that possibility that this could pop through breaking this um, level of resistance in the chart. And this happens to be a pattern that we call a rounded bottom breakout. And oftentimes it takes us a little bit of time to drag that 50 day moving out average out here and flatten out. That gives time for the shorter term averages to cross up. And notice we have a moving average squeeze in here where those moving averages have come together 
um, in that chart. And that possibility that that could get going, if we could get some bullishness in the market, that might just move itself along to the upside. And if you take a look um, in here, the, hot, the target up in here would be somewhere up around this resistance level, up here around that 200 day or 50 or 500 day moving average, which gives us a nice upside potential. Now, please keep in mind, it won't go up there in a straight line, but if it does start moving up there, um, we'll look look for that to be the um, ultimate upside target. So looking pretty good on pin. You might also want to take a look at Altria. Now I got to tell you guys, I have a little bias here on Altria. I picked up Altria as a longer term position and here's why. Here's that break of that downtrend and we held it as support in here so far. And then on Friday um, with the market pushing up, we had this nice little um, uh, bounce. Um, we sold off hard and then turned right around and bounced back up. Um, we've been seeing that a lot lately where we strip stops before we move up with the volatility. So keep an eye on this. Now this might not be ready for you for prime time, but it is a defensive sector stock. Um, so I'm I'm holding this for the longer term with trying to catch the dividend yield and things like that um, in this chart. But I like this pattern and I've done this multiple times um, in charts and um, they quite often pay off. So keep an eye on that. Also, I want to mention the potential guys that you may want to be thinking a little bit of both sides of the market. As a matter of fact, on Friday, I added some short positions um, to the market by using credit spreads. And um, if you will look as we push and approach resistance levels in the chart, we could make some pretty good money on the pullback. Now this reversal this morning, it's going to pay off pretty good just in a over the weekend hold on those credit spreads. But let's watch those closely. So it may be a good idea, guys, to start looking for those uh, bearish potential trades as we push back toward resistance levels and downtrends in the chart. Look for those possibilities of those failure trades where we can pick up a short. Now I know a lot of folks aren't comfortable shorting all that much, but I got to tell you, when the market is downtrending, you can make money faster if you are on the short side of the market because when markets fall, we know they just take off and fall. So keep a close eye on those charts that could be failing as we rally back toward 200 day moving averages. Look for those failures if we, as we rally back toward those 50 day moving averages. Look for those potential failure patterns because they can be very productive. As a matter of fact, this has been a fantastic year for me so far in the market and for a lot of folks in right way options because we have been prepared and we have been watching watching for these potential moves. So just kind of keep that in mind as you're looking for um, some trades here in the market. A couple others I want to mention here, guys. Um, take a look at gold now. GLD and gold miners, anything in that gold mining sector um, has been rather interesting. We've had a pretty big spike here um, up in gold. And notice that this morning we're trying to push up again. We're holding some support levels. Now, I would rather see this rest a little bit more in here, but watch that closely because there is that opportunity that could continue to surge to the upside with the uncertainty that we see in the market. And I'm gonna have to also put silver in that mix. Take a look, silver pressing through some resistance levels, holding as support and that possibility that we could push on through and maybe extend this upside trend in silver. So I would keep a pretty close eye on that. You, you might want to put FCX if you want to be long. FCX, you, there we go. You might want to put that in your list. It had a good day on the, well, the last couple of days here in the market, Thursday and Friday with that rally, pushing back through this resistance level up here in the chart. Now, if that continues, guys, we'll want to watch that closely because there is that opportunity that we could hold this level up here. Just hold that level up here, hold that trend and see that move on higher in uh, copper. So watch that one close. And you know, I gotta say other metals like Alcoa, Alcoa is looking really good 
moving up in this trend. Nice little bullish move here on Friday, potentially popping on through. And you could even maybe take a look at some steel. Steel is trying to pick up, look at the last couple of days, um, US Steel breaking that downtrend. Now, once again, don't chase something like that. What we wanna do is we wanna see that stock rest, consolidate or pullback to set up that higher low in here, follow that trend for that next upside opportunity. But you might wanna take a look at like US Steel or Steel Dynamics, um, Cleveland Cliffs, things like that are, have started to rally back up pretty nicely. Take a look at some of the other defensive stocks like Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola breaking through resistance and trying to hold up here. So watch that carefully. A lot of volatility in here. I'm not telling you it's going to be easy, but uh, pushing up through there, any rest or pullback could set up that next opportunity and maybe we resume that uptrend here in Coke. So there's a few trades for you to consider to think about. I want to wish you guys all a fantastic day in the market. Be safe and be careful. Expect intraday whipsaws. Expect complete overnight reversals as we work through all the uncertainty in this market. Everyone have an awesome day and we'll see you right back here bright and early Tuesday morning.